Hey YouTube, in part one I talked about using bit masking to break up a byte into its individual bits so that I could interface with this LCD. In this video, I'll be talking about how it's possible to get this alphanumeric display to show bitmapped animation. This display is designed to show pre-programmed letters and numbers contained in its CG-ROM, character generator read-only memory. The bytes sent from the program to the LCD correspond to letters stored in the CG-ROM. However, along the far left side, there is a column labeled CG RAM, containing the numbers 1 to 8. These 8 slots are programmable and can be used to generate custom characters. To get my Pong playing field onto the screen, my plan was to arrange the 8 characters into a 4x2 grid and manipulate pixels inside those 8 characters to get a 20 by 16 bitmap. At face value, this seemed like a very simple solution, but it ended up being very complex. Each character in the CG RAM is 5 pixels wide and 8 pixels tall. Each row is made up the 5 least significant bits of a byte. The address of the byte determines the particular row in which you are writing. For the first custom character, the rows are addressed hexadecimal 40 to hexadecimal 47. The second character is hexadecimal 48 to hexadecimal 4F. This continues up to the last byte of the 8th custom character which is addressed hexadecimal 7F. Knowing all of this, I started to make a map of where the CG RAM addresses would be on the display. I had to come up with some general rules that would allow me to find the exact value and the byte where that value would be stored for any pixel on the screen without using a big lookup table or a lot of if statements. It looks a little overwhelming, but I'm going to break down these two functions step by step and show how it was possible to turn XY coordinates into a value and a byte address for my 4x2 grid of characters. To find the value for any given point, what I'm really looking for is exactly where inside a given byte I should change a 0 to a 1. Looking at just the 0th row of the first character, we can see that the 0th pixel corresponds to the 2 to the power 4 bit. The first pixel corresponds to the 2 to the power 3rd bit, and so on to the fourth pixel, which corresponds to the 2 to the power 0 bit. This means that the bit value is equal to 2 to the power of 4 minus x. For an x value of 0, we get 2 to the power of 4, and for an x value of 4, we get 2 to the power of 0. To make this cover any x value, and not just 0 to 4, I use the modulus function. Modulus returns the remainder of a division, so for x mod 5, the values of x being 0 to 9, the results would be 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. This means that for any x value, we can get the bit by the function 2 to the power of 4 minus x modulus 5. To find the address of the byte where I want to store this value is a little more complicated, depending on both the x and y value of the pixel but by looking at the map of the byte addresses, we can see some patterns. Moving downward, the addresses increase by 1 until the divide between the upper 4 and lower 4 characters. When moving from left to right, we can see an increase of hexadecimal 08 in the addresses after every fifth pixel. Let's look at just the upper left character first. For the y values 0 to 7, we can use the function hexadecimal 40 plus y modulus 8. This will return hexadecimal 40 to hexadecimal 47. The modulus 8 will make sense a little later. Looking at the top row of characters altogether, the address jumps up by hexadecimal 08 after every 5 pixels. This can be described by the quotient of x divided by 5 times 8. The quotient of x divided by 5, division without the remainder, increases by 1 after every fifth column. By multiplying this value by 8, we do get a value that when added to our previously calculated address gives us the exact location of the byte where we want to store our value. As long as the x value is between 0 to 19 and the y value is from 0 to 7. Finally, I had to take care of the jump in addresses between the upper and lower four characters. Looking at the map again, we can see that the lower four characters have addresses that are exactly hexadecimal, to zero more than the corresponding upper addresses. Adding 
hexadecimal 20 times the quotient of y divided by 8 to our function will include the hexadecimal 20 offset whenever the y value is greater than 7. Putting it all together, for any pixel, the address is hexadecimal 40 plus y modulus 8 plus the quotient of x divided by 5 times 8 plus the quotient of y divided by 8 times hexadecimal 20. And the value to be stored in this address is 2 to the power of 4 minus x modulus 5. Now that both the byte address and the value to be stored in the byte can be calculated, I can pass that information to the LCD using the techniques I described in my first video. It may seem like a lot of work just to play Pong, but this was one of the most technically complicated problems I've taken on with software, and I was pleased to find that with enough work it was possible to not only solve these problems, but do so in a way that taught me new mathematical and computing concepts. I hope you found this video interesting, and if you'd like to see more like this, check out my channel. Thanks for watching.